What is going on investors back again time to take a look at another stock this time another electric car maker Lee Auto ticker symbol LI this company just went public just a few weeks ago they've got a pretty hefty 12.5 billion dollar valuation we got no profits and uh, not a lot of revenue, but we're going to jump into all that. Now, if you want to watch some of the other videos on YouTube, they talk about the car, they talk about the range, they talk about the design. I am not going to be talking about any of that. If you want motor trend like reviews, go look at the other reviews. We're going to actually talk about the stock, talk about the financials, talk about some of the stuff in their S1 filing, which is kind of a pre IPO filing that all companies have to do. It might be referred to as something a little bit differently since this is a, a company out of China. There's some interesting stuff in here. And then finally, we're going to jump over the stock chart, take a look at what we got here. So again, I'm pulling up what's referred to mainly in the United States as an S1 filing, but you can also refer to this almost like an annual report. It reads exactly like that. It's got all these risk factors, a lot of information in here. If you're willing to read it, there's some really good information. Now, the first thing that I saw that jumped onto me is as of March 31st, 2020, awards to purchase an aggregate amount of $53.7 million shares well, were a part of an equity award. Again, this is for employees. These are grants. They're not always exercised. Sometimes they're forfeited, but it's just something to remind you that early stage companies like this that are really almost pre-revenue and certainly pre-profit, they're going to be rewarding a lot of their management employees and things like that with shares that's going to dilute you as a common shareholder, something that you want to keep in mind. Now, Here's something that is very serious. Uh, the material they, as they were going through their audit to become public, the material weakness that they identified by an auditor was a lack of sufficient compliant financial reporting and accounting personnel with appropriate understanding of United States generally accepted accounting principles to design and implement formal period ending financial reporting policies and procedures to address complex U.S. gap technical accounting issues. So basically, these guys, uh, you know, they can't even report U.S. gap financials, okay? This was found to be a weakness set forth by auditors, their independent auditor, and obviously the SEC will come after them. As I was reading through this, it actually did kind of become apparent that they were lacking a little bit in terms of clarity, and so that's something that you definitely want to be aware of as a shareholder. Now, this one, I think it gets even more serious. On June 4th, the president of the United States issued a memorandum ordering the president's working group on financial markets to submit a report to the president within 60 days. So, it, you know, June, July, August should be any time now includes recommendations for actions that can be taken by the executive branch and by the SEC and the PCAOB on Chinese companies, which is Li Auto, listed on the UX stock exchange and their audit firms in an effort to protect investors of the United States. However, it remains unclear what's going to happen here. Okay, we all know what's going on with TikTok and, and other things that are going on with this administration. Now, you might say, well, maybe this administration is going to be gone here in a minute. Well, hold on a second. On July 21st, the U.S. House of Representatives, okay, this is controlled by Democrats, which is the opposite party that is in power uh, as opposed to the, the president of the United States. So you have the president issue in a memorandum. And on July 21st, the U.S. House of Representatives, which again is in Democrats control, they approved a version of the National Defense Act for fiscal year 2021, which contains provisions comparable to the Kenny Bill. If either bill is an act of law, it would it, it would amend this law here and direct the SEC to prohibit securities of any registered from being listed in the United States exchange or trade it over the counter if the auditor of the registration financial statements is not subject to the PCAOB inspection. And if you come back up here, they were not inspected by the PCAOB. So this is a company that 
when this law, it, I, again, I don't know if the Senate, Senate is going to approve this or what, but maybe if we have a change in administration, this bill will be sitting there for the next Senate. If that changes hands and goes to, to the other party, well, maybe they'll pass this. Okay, this is not good. Uh, I would say this is definitely a risk factor you want to uh, uh, keep in mind. Obviously, there's probably some workarounds and things like that, things these companies might be able to do. But based on this law and based on the fact that this company was not inspected by a PCAOB, well, guess what? Then they might be delisted from the exchange and that would really suck if you own some shares. Now, uh, another thing that's pretty standard, but it's something that you want to be aware of because they have uh, some dual class uh shareholdings here and they have a, a shareholder has more than 5% total voting control. That means Lee auto is not going to be a part of one of these major exchanges. Now they, they probably aren't large enough. They don't have profits, things like that. They can certainly be in ETFs and things like that. It's just something that you want to keep in mind. Uh, they're not going to be included in the S and P 500 or some of these major indices until uh, they clear up their dual class voting structure and the class structure in, in general. Moving on now, here's some positive news gone over a little bit of negative, some, but some positive news here. It looks like they cleared or they were expecting to clear about a billion dollars, uh, United States dollars here uh, and what they were going to use it for. Now, whenever a company IPOs, I think it's imperative that you understand where that money is going to. I looked at a company a couple weeks ago, Smile Direct Club. They had an IPO not too long ago. Well, guess what? All the money went to the insiders, which is fine. Those guys and girls deserve their money from cashing out of the company, but you as the common shareholder is now investing in a company that might be cash strapped, so to speak. So this money, this $1 billion, approximately 50% is going to capital expenditures. About 40% is going to research and development of new products. And the only 10% is actually going to corporate purposes. I actually think this is probably the most positive thing I've read so far in this uh, S1 filing is that 90% uh, of the IPO money is going to capital expenditures. Okay. And that's pretty, you know, that they actually say in the next three years will be approximately 1.5 billion. So they have enough money here to survive a little while. You know, I think they're going to be doing some more fundraising. I think that's expected with these early stage IPO companies. And then 40% is going to go to develop new products, which is certainly a positive if they're able to develop new products, maybe they make more money. Now, let's take a look at some of their cars. They have this car, the Lee One, and they're, you know, they're actually delivering these cars, which is a positive. They just started delivering these uh, in December of last year, so not, you know, barely uh, eight, nine months ago. And we see here the deliveries have actually steadily ticked up, and they actually just crossed the $10,000 mark in the most recent quarter that they, uh, you know, in the most recent month that they reported here in this S1 filing. So this is a positive. It looks like every month, you know, they appear to be increasing by about, uh, call it about 2,000 vehicles, especially over the last few months. So that is a positive. This trend continues, possibly a good thing. Now, from a financial perspective, again, this is a $12 billion company. Now we got to assume on the balance sheet, they have what, about $1 billion. So, you know, you can factor that in with the valuation. But this is a company that is still not making a ton of money. This is in the local currency, the RMB. And so we have vehicle sales here at 280. Notice that we spent 279 to make 280. That was back in December of 19. Again, they had only sold uh, just a handful of vehicles. Now, in March 31st, this is not even going to include the most recent quarter for whatever. Again, this is why I struggle a little bit with this company. They haven't given us like the these updated financials in April, May, June, even July. Uh, they haven't given us these numbers for whatever reason. But back in March here, they they did, you know, they cleared a lot more money because obviously they sold a lot more vehicles. And they actually, from a gross profit perspective, was actually profitable, which is a little bit different than what I've seen with some of these other early stage uh 
manufacturers of electronic cars. So they were profitable here. I think Neo, when I looked at it a, f a few weeks ago, uh, was not profitable from a gross profit perspective. Again, these companies are scaling up. I'm not really expecting that. I don't think investors are necessarily expecting that either. It's just something that you want to keep in mind. This company actually pulled out a positive gross profit. Now, that's not the full story because we got research and development fees that are pretty hefty. We've got selling general administrative that's pretty hefty. And that gets us to a total operating expenses down here at 302. And so we've got a loss from operations here at 234, but it compares favorably to the beginning of the year when we lost 595. So this is a company that's trending in the right direction, but they, don't get me wrong. This is a company that's going to be a long, long ways, in my opinion, from generating large, large profits. I know from a gross profit perspective in the quarter, they were actually positive. And so that was actually, that's actually really positive and, and, and something, but this is, again, this is in the Chinese currency. This is not in United States dollars, something that you want to factor in when we talk about a $12 billion valuation. This is not in billions or millions of dollars, in fact. So that's what you want to factor in. We've got 77 million RMB net loss that compares very, very favorable for the beginning of the year. So it shows you as they are spinning their wheels, spinning more cars out, selling more cars, these numbers should actually improve. So that is a positive. Now, from an asset side of the balance sheet, this is from December 31st. Again, I, I don't know why this company is not giving us more current financials. It's something that I think they really should do uh, very quickly for investors. But everything looks pretty clean here. You know, every, you know, they, they obviously in 2018, they were just starting out. They didn't have much money in the bank. Now they got a lot more in 2019 after the IPO, they're going to have a lot of money. They're going to be well capitalized uh, going forward from a liability side. They do have some liability, some of these warrants and things like that. We'll see where these stand after the IPO, see if it cleans it up just a little bit. But from a liability side, you know, they have about 4.9 million, 4.9 billion RMB in terms of liabilities. Compare that to 9.5 billion in uh, assets on the asset side. So it's a pretty clean balance sheet, in my opinion. So this is a company from a car sales perspective has got it trending in the right direction from an operating profit is actually trending in the right direction a little faster. And I thought, man, these, these, Chinese car companies are scaling up way faster than the electronic vehicle makers. I mean, set aside Tesla. It took Tesla a decade really to, to scale up. But especially if you talk about VW and Mercedes and, and Ford and GM, these car companies are turning the corner rapidly. And so to me, that says two things. It's a good sign in, in one sense that these companies are able to do that. In the second sense, that means that competition is just going to keep coming and coming and coming. If these companies can basically start up and then get to gross profit within, you know, a year, basically, that just shows me there is going to be a ton of competition in this space, especially in China, whether or not that materials over here in the United States or Europe or other parts of the world, that certainly remains to be seen. But it is something that you want to keep in mind. This is almost like the cell phone market. This is like, uh, you know, the, the maybe electronic TVs, any kind of commoditized product, in my opinion, electronic vehicles are going to become a commoditized product in China, I believe, probably in the next three to four years, meaning there might not be a lot of profits, even if these car companies are able to sell a lot of vehicles. We'll see if that ends up being true or not. Now, jumping over the stock chart, what we know is true is this stock went public back up in here again, just a couple weeks ago. And boom, it made a top here at about $19, 1990. And we have been in a sustained downtrend ever since. It, you know, it kind of, you know, wanted to create an uptrend here. You know, we had a more defined downtrend here for a second, you know, this was a, a really, really well-defined downtrend. It broke it, but then we broke down again and we're down here at the $15 mark. Now, what do I do with early stage IPO companies? I usually just put them on a watch list. There will be some demand here for shares. We see that there was some demand right in here. So well, the stock bottomed out here. It acted as support. It popped up. It came here. It wanted to hesitate here a little bit, but then it broke down and then it kind of 
of hit its head against here. It When it broke here, it, it wanted to almost trade. And then when it breaks down, it breaks down. We'll have a little bit of support here at 1587. I think this stock's going to have a little trouble breaking through this 1580, 1590 range. I think that's going to, uh, you know, maybe keep a lid on the stock. Now, if it does break that 1590, you know, you probably have some upside into the 16, maybe even $17 range. Um, you know, your downside, I think, is back to retesting these lows at 14, although there's just not enough price action, not enough data on this type of company to really understand what's going on. Volume is almost non-existent. We had some larger volume spikes, obviously, right when it went public, but we really haven't seen a lot of volume except on up days, which tells me that's probably like retail interest. Um, as the stock sells off, we're not seeing a lot of volume. That might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. But I think the dilution pressure of this, so the dilutive action of giving money to the employees and the executives and also likely doing more fundraising through dilutive actions will probably keep a lid on this stock as well. To me, I would keep this one maybe on a watch list. And like I said, I think that the Chinese automakers are going to turn the electronic vehicles into a commoditized product. It's just amazing. These cars look nice. Again, I encourage you to maybe do a little bit more research. I didn't want to sh uh, cloud this video up with, uh, you know, drive, you know, driving reviews and looking at the car. That's for you to do if you want to get into all that. But it's amazing how quickly these car companies have come up with a really viable product and sales. And I just think more and more and more companies are going to be doing that, especially in the Chinese market. It's going to be difficult. I think to separate yourself. So that's just something to keep in mind. We also have a $12 billion valuation and at the current price and the current valuation that the company has in terms of sales and obviously pro lack of profits thereof, uh, it, it's a pretty hefty valuation at the current moment. So that's where I stand with Lee Auto. It's not terrible. I've certainly looked at worse stocks over the last few weeks, but this is one I think it's got some risk. It's got some risk uh, from a you know a liability side as well, from a, a regulation side as well. I wouldn't count on if we have a, a, a regime change here in the United States at the president that's going to change any of the relations between the United States and China. That's something you also want to factor in when you're investing in these companies. So there we go. That was Lee Otto. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Maybe hit that like button. Maybe leave me a comment. Tell me uh, what you what you guys think about it. Thanks again. Good luck with your investments.